with Sarah with Futurism. Today we're here at the incredible World's Fair Nano in Brooklyn. We're going to be speaking with some really revolutionary scientists who are changing the fields of neuroscience, planetary science, 4D printing, and more. What is synesthesia? So synesthesia is essentially the, the blending of the senses. So people with synesthesia experience things like color with letters and numbers, color with sounds, or even taste with textures, all sorts of combinations. What imaging studies have shown is that people with synesthesia seem to have brains that are maybe more connected together, these different sense areas are more connected together, or at least more active together. Could you speak a bit about the type or types that you have? Yeah, one of the types that I have is called grapheme color synesthesia, which is one of the more common types of synesthesia. A grapheme is just a fancy word for letters and numbers, essentially. For me, something like the word cat, the letter C is black, the letter A is red, and the letter T is red-orange. So when I see the word cat, sure, I can see the actual color of cat, but then there's also an additional color overlaid on top of it. Another form of synesthesia that I have is called mirror touch synesthesia. And that's essentially kind of the mixing of vision information and touch information. So when we see other people move or get touched or in pain, our brains activate in a way that seems to almost recreate the experience of the person that we're looking at. And it's believed that, that it's kind of the beginning of things like empathy or trying to understand what other people are thinking and feeling. I feel like it's helped to influence how I see the world and helped to bring me towards medicine as well. In one of the things that I've read that you've had a lot of involvement is in is preventative neuromedicine. Yeah. So could you speak a bit about that and kind of what you're already doing in that field currently? In the clinic, what I do is I see people who have active disease and figure out how can I improve their quality of life, but also people who may be at a higher risk, maybe they have a family history, figure out what is their actual risk and what can we do then to, to help prevent them from developing disease. And so a lot of what I do is figure out how much exercise are you doing? What are you actually eating? What are you doing to keep yourself socially engaged and active? And I'm specifically interested in how social relationships, how we interact with one another influences our brain health. And a lot of research has shown that there's an increase in the risk of developing these diseases if you are socially isolated. What's happening down the line? What is where's yeah. your research going? So really, really exciting stuff going on, with, especially within the world of Alzheimer's disease. The the general thought now is that the reason why you know over ten different drug trials have failed in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease when we thought we knew what was causing it, this amyloid protein buildup in the brain, uh, is because we were starting to treat too late. It's already anticipated that starting earlier is going to help. So there's already been funding for what's called the A3 trial, getting a little earlier. And eventually we'll get to an A0 trial. Do you think that um, down the line we'll completely be able to use preventative medicine to prevent these neurodegenerative I think that's where we he we're headed. I don't know exactly how soon that's going to be, but I feel based off of how things are moving and the more the kind of support there is behind this research, I think we'll have our answer sooner. And I can imagine probably the next 50 years we may be able to literally cure Alzheimer's disease.